the 550 consists of the full-size female mannequin with the birthing fetus. The fetus delivers automatically and the 550 includes a neonate. The neonate can be intubated orally or nasally. You can do CPR, VVM, and UMBI. Of course, Noel, in either the 550 or 551, can be intubated orally or nasally, BVM, and it gets a real nice chest rise. And you can do IM, IV, and of course, deliver the child. So let's get started with a delivery. Now, in order to get started with the delivery, first, let's look under the tummy cover and we observe a line that brings you the fetal heart and lung sounds from a speaker located here. The speaker is set very softly so that the uh, fetal heart sounds can be heard with a stethoscope placed in this region by the student during delivery. The fetus itself is placed in the ROA position, right occipital anterior position. The placenta can be placed either low in the abdomen or high. Similarly, you can place the placenta so that a fair amount of traction will be needed after delivery of the child and during the delivery of the placenta, or you can place the placenta in a way so that it will eyes easily come out. Another feature of this simulator is the fact that the cervix dilates automatically as the fetus moves down the birth canal. It starts out at about one and a half to two centimeters and dilates as the baby progresses down the birth canal. The cervix is easily removable. Similarly, the vulva is easily removable as well. And of course, you can do a episiotomy. In addition, we have an inflatable base on the abdomen that can be inflated with the squeeze bulb here. And when put into place, the abdomen raises and lifts the baby up so that you can do Leopold maneuvers. Now, the fetus during this birthing process will start in ROA and as it progresses down the birth canal, it will move toward a nose down position. And then it will rotate once again to present its shoulder here. With that in mind, let's get started. Noel is powered by this device where the fetal heart rate is adjustable from 60 to 140, all the way up to 200 beats per minute in, in increments of 20 beats. The fetal heart rate, four different delivery speeds, the fastest being about two minutes and the slowest being 15 to 20 minutes. At any time during the process, the instructor may pause to make a point and then resume the process. And you naturally have the on-off switch. Power for this unit is given to us by an international power supply that runs from 100 to 240 volts. Now, let's get started. I've set the delivery speed to the fastest possible, and I've set the heart rate to 140 beats a minute. At this time, you should be able to hear the small DC motor that powers the birthing mechanism start and then stop, start a second time, stop, and then continue onward. The initial starting and stopping is to mimic the fact that early in the delivery process, the delivery is a bit slower. And at any time, the student can assess the fetal heart rate to determine whether it's a nice, healthy 140, or whether the instructor has dropped it to an ominous 60, or whether the fetus is very uh, agitated and perhaps has gone up to 160 or 180. Now at this particular point we're nearing crowning and we can hit the pause button. At this time, of course, the student could again assess fetal heart rate, the student could appreciate the fontanelles, and then the instructor could say, okay, do we have nose up 
or nose down. At this time, the instructor can superimpose emergency situations on Noel. For example, perhaps she needs additional oxygen. You can BVM, you can intubate. Perhaps she needs fluids. No problem, you can provide IV fluids. Or perhaps the blood pressure needs to be assessed. The instructor can superimpose various complications in the normal process. Now, let's hit the resume button and continue. What I'm doing right now, and I'm naturally I'm being doing this with gloved hands, is I'm facilitating the delivery of the child. We now are past the crowning position. We could pause at this time to uh, aspirate the mouth and the nose. We'll elect to allow it to continue. Notice that it's, the shoulders are moving around and presenting. We have a little bit of dystocia built into the system. And when the shoulders are completely delivered, an optical counter in Noel says, OK, the birth is complete, the motor turns off, and at this time, the student should remove the fetus from Noel in the normal fashion and then proceed to birth the placenta. Now that we've delivered the fetus, we can clamp and cut the cord and turn the child over to the resuscitation team. At this point, we can proceed with birthing the placenta, which could have been placed in a position where significant traction would have been required or a rather easy birth is in order. In this case, I've elected to simply remove the placenta in the normal fashion. Now, let's talk a bit more about the birthing fetus. It's highly articulated. The reason we have done this is so that you can practice Leopold maneuvers with the child. It can be folded up into any normal position and we'll show you how it can be placed either in a transverse position, a normal position, or a breech position. Now let's see how that's accomplished. Now I have returned the birthing carriage to the original position and I'm going to remove the adapter and then we're going to install the posterior portion of the tummy on the top of the birthing mechanism. This device is powered by air and as the squeeze valve is activated manually, the fetus will move anteriorly up to the top of the tummy cover and at that time you can begin your Leopold maneuver. I folded up the fetal baby in this fashion and note that it can be placed either in a conventional lie, a transverse lie, or a breech position. If we elect to try a rather normal lie, we can place it in this fashion and put the tummy cover back on and snap it in place and then we'll activate the lift mechanism to bring the baby anteriorly. With the tummy cover in place, we'll pump the baby up, bring it forward anteriorly, 30 or 40 pumps should be enough, and at this point you're ready to begin your Leopold maneuvers. First determine is the head down or is the head up? Is the lie in this fashion or in some other fashion. You'll be able to palpate to see whether you're feeling a spine or whether you're feeling, feeling elbows and knees. So in this fashion, the students can learn to appreciate the importance of Leopold maneuvers. Now that Noel has delivered the fetus, let's turn our attention to the neonate that is available in the model 550. This neonate you're able to intubate orally or nasally, of course, do BVM, 
and do CPR and provide medications through the umbilicus. The internal upper torso contains a heart and lungs and rib cage, so you have the anatomical landmarks and you have very nice chest rise with adequate DVM technique. This neonate is available on the model 550. Now let's review. The Noel 550 contains the articulating adult, the automatic birthing mechanism, the birthing fetus that births from the ROA position, the placenta, of course the removable services, and vulval inserts, the device for doing the Leopold maneuvers, as well as the neonate that can be intubated orally or nasally, and umbilicus, as well as, of course, CPR. These, the 550 and the 551, are two of the five systems that we've developed for obstetrics and management of obstetrical emergencies. Thank you. We hope you've enjoyed the show.